Hey everybody, it's Lewis Porter Jr. Still getting this whole night thing together. Two seconds in and already problems. Well, that's always good to know. Well, whatever. These things happen. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm just going to get this thing together. going to be shooting this live. Ugh. And just going from there. Let me actually close this stuff down because I'm sitting here. We're kind of about three or four different projects at the same time. Since this is very different from the traditional way we normally would do this, walking outside and everything. And, you know, we've gotten this back in my office. I'm using my phone again. But I'm trying to set it up where I can use my webcam on my computer. And that looks like I'll be doing that this week. <laughs> Getting that set up to do this as like a regular nightly show. As I'm going to keep calling it. But it's a nightly show. I feel it's, it's at night. It's a nightly show. So, um, if this is your first time ever seeing it, this is uh, Transparency Agenda Daily. Uh, it's a little daily show I do. We talk about the industry from all different angles, all different stuff. Um, oh, Jeff Lee just joined. Uh, Jeff Lee, one of the main writers on Neo Exodus and for LPJ Design. What's going on? Uh, funny enough, since Jeff popped in, uh, I was looking actually at his... Um, he submitted a project to us, uh, I think, two weeks ago on Dragons. And we're doing um, Psionic right next to my router. So I don't know why this is so bad. Hmm, this does not make me happy. See, once again, very different from outside. So, Jeff, like I said, Jeff turned in the project on the dragons. It is very awesome. I'm still waiting on the art to come back for on some of the heads of the dragon. I think I've put some of the stuff online, so you've seen that. Get a good rough estimate of what it looks like and what's going to happen. I think it's going to be an awesome product. I think, once again, Jeff has done a great job on it. So, you know, another solid product from Jeff. Not a surprise. Not a big surprise at all. Does awesome work. It's awesome. There you go. So that's what's going on with that. Um, I'm also still getting back some edits from the new Exodus book. That's going to be, you know, they're just moving along. Uh, if you want to see, you know, this is how many pages I have. Let me just put this. This is going to be fun. Since the thing is, uh, all right, let me try this. So, this is what it's hard to do when you're hoping you don't have a camera like you normally would. So if you're wondering. Here's the book so far, and this is only chapters 1 through 5. You know, 1 through 5. I still have chapters 6, 7, 8, and 9 to print out. Look how, I mean, look how much... Dude, look at this, look at this. This thing is thick, it's thick. Hell, you want to make a comparison? This is, and this is a single five pages. Uh, God, I can barely reach it from over here. Ugh. Boom. <laughs> look at this. Look at this. Look how thick this book is. Look, look. And it's only, I'm only not even halfway through. Look at this. I started to go through all these pages. Oh my God. How did I get all this work to do? I, didn't, I wasn't really planning on this. And of course, I don't know if you all saw this. I got, yeah, I think I actually did. Show this. I got this on Free RPG Day. Uh, also, our buddy Brian, who runs Adventure Games, was kind enough to give us uh, this, give me this lovely book. He told me how good it was. And I've got to start reading it. Which I'm like, I think I read some of this. But some of the art is from like the old 80s stuff. You'll see a lot of actually guys who do comic books initially got into doing this. Um, this is actually uh, a new product from our buddies over at, let me put it here so you guys can see it, uh, Alligator Alley Entertainment. These guys are um, new guys, that, well, well, kind of new. Actually, the guys who used to do Paradigm Concepts have spun off their own uh, new company, Alligator. Uh, Eric Weiner, you know, know Eric from Paradigm Concepts, uh, and Rich Lafleur, who did a lot of let's say Lesko Floor, Lesko Floor, Lesko Floor, see Lesko Floor, who did a lot of maps for um, us uh, just recently for uh, Crisis of the World Leader. Uh, this is his first five E product. Um, I th as I said before, I think he should be doing stuff for Pathfinder, but he loves five E and he's doing really really cool. So I'm like boom. Just want to give him a nice little shout out like that. Oh, that was kind of nice, you know. And so, just so you all know, some other stuff. Well, I'll put this back down here. So much stuff. How is it? I have so much stuff on my desk. So I've got this. I'm looking at this. And I'm looking at this. And I'm also looking at this. So you can kind of guess what kind of mindset I'm in of, as of late. So... I'm really focusing on some stuff for Starfinder and thinking about what's going to happen in that. So that's kind of the focus. See, now you can see, me, see I'm putting my computer in front of me, my big monster, my two monitors. It's a 
the beast. And so I'm here just thinking about what we're going to do and planning the future. So tonight we're going to talk about something. It's kind of a it's kind of a two part thing. And I'm going to be smart because I'm going to because I decided this time bring some water. But usually when I do these things, I don't drink anything, and I always get upset. Like, oh, my throat's so dry. Ah. So we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff. Oh, look, my father joined. So. Uh, if you've been, if you are a friend of mine on Facebook, you might have seen a picture yesterday where I showed my father with a bowl full of bananas and an apple with a bunch of Snickers bars in it because healthy food. So that's something you can check out. It's funny. This this happens a lot in my family. Very weird, uh, funny uh, things happen uh, in my family. Uh, so there you go. So tonight we're going to talk about. All right. There's two. There's two projects I'm working on right now. There's two main. Well, let me rephrase that. There's two secret projects I'm working on right now that you guys haven't heard anything of. <clears throat> I know Jeff has heard uh, one of them. <clears throat> Actually, both of them. Yeah, Jeff has heard about both of them. <clears throat> but I'm going to talk about one of them tonight. Ugh. I was eating almonds and now one went down the wrong pipe. So I'm going to go. Ah, that's better. So, project, project what? I'm going to call it, uh, well, I'll just tell you about it. All right, so for a long time, a lot of people know that we were doing uh, Neo Exodus Legacies. That was done by J.P. Chapelot. J.P. was nice enough to set that up for us and run that for us for a very long time. And J.P. did an awesome job at that. And, you know, J.P. did a great job on that. What can I say to that? Uh, when we started to go two different ways in the, in the stuff, J.P. continued to do um, his actual, his new campaign on uh, Do It For A Living campaign. And I kind of put, put mine to the side and thought about, okay, what do I want to do? How do I want to do this better? And think about some stuff J.P. always told me that would be better long term. One of the issues that I always talked about, at least from my perspective, was the recording aspect of um, Pathfinder Society, Living Camp, uh, Living City, uh, any kind of living campaign. It's that how do you get people to record the information, keep it online, keep it easily accessible, know that they've already played an adventure, gone through an adventure, check all that stuff, and while at the same time, have it not cost a lot of money to do that. So I kept, you know, going around in circles about it and really thinking about it. And I said, okay, let's let's see if I can develop myself and find someone to do that. Okay, so I put out the plea list from people I knew. Nothing major, just some, some people I knew told me what I need to look for, what I should expect. I was like, okay, that's reasonable. So I happened to find a, actually a computer programmer, an engineer, and also a gamer, you know, knows gaming. Ugh, I keep doing this every five seconds. It's going to drive me crazy. Ah, there's a fly in here. Jeez. Um... We started talking about it. I'm like, hey, this is what I'd like to do. This is what I'd like to see. How much would something like this be possible? Can we get something down? So I saw information, and I basically put it out, and I said, okay, here you go. Well, this person never, he never, like, really responded back. I mean, he tried it, like, once, and he said, oh, I'm very busy. Things happen. I'm like, okay, no problem. Run them again. And this is, like, and this is the course. I'm shortening it for, for video, but this is in the course of, like, maybe a month, even going on to six weeks now. And I haven't got any input back. And I just go, and this goes back to something that just drives me crazy about this industry as a whole. And it's like, oh, and this is the part that really just really upsets me. And, and you see people use this phrase all the time. Oh, people, you know, people are, you know, they're they're not professional. They're not professional. They're not professional. They're not. Pro and that's a phrase that people use constantly in this whole industry of not being professional. I wish they were more professional. I wish they were more, you know, I I, I don't get the need or the desire that people want to get in this industry, they want to work hard, they want to get involved, but then when they actually get the opportunity to, it just falls apart, and it's really, ooh, fly, and it's really like, I don't think it's really that difficult to do, I mean, what we do, and that kind of focus, but at the same time, it's like, why would you miss up a, an easy opportunity? You know I'm looking for someone to do this project. I'm very, very passionate about doing this project. I want to do this project, but then people start like, nope. I know you all this stuff, and I know you're going to pay me, but nope, I don't want to do it now. And, you know, it's it's it just gets to a point where you just go, ugh, it becomes frustrating as a publisher to get the product made. I've talked about this before about when I first met Jeff. Um, Jeff Jeff Lee and another individual came to me at the same time and said, hey, I want to write for you. And I both gave them projects. The other guy, I don't know what happened to him. I can't, I can't even remember his name. If I tried, I could not remember his name. Jeff's been working with me ever since, and I think he's done very well for himself. He's worked for very, several major companies, Cobalt, Legendary Games, you know. You know, you know, Alan, yeah, fear is a mind killer, but the sad part is, like, it, there's nothing to fear. 
because I tell people, look, if there's a problem, just talk to me. I'm I'm more than happy to talk to you if there's a problem. We can make it work. We can find a way to make it work. We can get the hustle together, and we can get this moving in a positive direction. I mean, look, I, I've said from day one, I think the only way for a third party to really survive and thrive over a long-term period is living campaigns. I think a, li- a, living, a living campaign only helps a third-party company. And there should be a system in place. And, I mean, this, this is what I truly believe. There should be a system in place that anybody could use, basically can, can license out or use. So we got this whole thing, living whatever, you know, living new Exodus or whatever we're going to call it. You know, it's, you know, they got legacies, but whatever we're going to call this li- living thing. We build it, we make it. Hey, you as a uh, third party guy, you want to use it? Okay, it's going to cost you X amount of dollars per month, or even better, which I think would be a smarter way, is it's going to cost you a percentage of your sales of your PDF that you sell from us. Now, you could sell somewhere else, and we'll then we'll just charge you a fee for it, but it'd be smart to say, hey, if you put your, all your ventures here, and this is going to be the source for it, you know, whatever we sell, you get a percentage, it gets to you, that kind of thing. I want to make it very, very easy. So people want to come in and they want to, oh, I want to put my. Uh, put my character online, you put your character online, you register your name, all that stuff's done online. So it's all there. Oh, you played a game, okay, judge has to go and just check, okay, this is stuff you said you got, check, 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 done, all digital, you know, an app to it, very easy, move on. You know, that's how good I want it to be. I think it's reasonable to do that. I think it's it's just smart to do it. It's, you know, that's that's how the future's going to be. It should be a very easy digital process to put together. I don't I don't understand why it becomes such a hassle and I don't use the word hassle, but hassle that people are upset by it. I'm like, come on, dude, this is not this is not difficult. This is not a tough thing. This is something that we can do very easy and very quickly and get it going. But once again, it's always a problem. It's always tough putting together. And it, it kind of hurts me that this is this is the same thing. And it's like, look, this is 2016. We're still doing the same thing the same way we did for the last 20 years. How about we move to the 21st century? And let's really move to the 21st century. Why is there no app like this available? Why has no one covered this base? All you need is a software engineer. And if, if I can find a software engineer out there, I'll tell you right now, anybody's a software engineer, you know someone's a software engineer who wants to work on something like this and something like this excite them, please send them my way. You know, send me my, so you can send them my way. Uh, John, it's kind of the management of the structure to work out a disagreement between, yeah, you know what? You know, it's it's like, I think John just put this on the post. He goes, it's kind of also the management and structure and how the work will be, uh, work out disagreements between participating publishers. Of course, these are issues. These things will always happen. They will always be there. But I think at its core, you can fix these things. I mean, let's let's just call it like it is. You can figure out a way to figure out disagreements. Because there's always going to be disagreements. If you're married, you understand there's going to be disagreements. And you know what? You figure out a way to make those work, so... It's not that difficult, so I think that I think that's part of it. I think the other part being definitely the tech side, and I think since look, everybody knows I'm a front end designer. I make graphic design. I do websites. I'm very good at the front end. I make it look beautiful. You'll be like, oh, this is stunning. That's what I'm good at. The back end, I don't know. If I could find somebody who's really committed to really do it and sit down and say, look, this is how we're going to do it. This is how we're going to generate our funds. This is how we're going to pay ourselves, including you. And this is how it's going to be good for everybody. I think those little factors, bam, 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 can easily be done and easily pitched to people and easily put together. Oh, fly. Ooh. Yes, if you did not know, I cannot stand flies. It's flies in my nose is the most disgusting insect ever. I just, ugh, ugh, disgusting. So, I just think people, oh, okay, that's, I agree it's a matter of someone doing it, Yes. I've offered technical support if needed. If anyone wants to set up the structure, sorry, I just yeah. I think once again, I think this it can it can easily be done if someone will just sit down and do it. Like I said, I I'm I want someone to raise their hand and say yes, I'll do it, I'll try. I'll take someone who's not even hundred percent sure they can get it done. Why not? Let's test out. Let's see what the problems are. Let's see what other things we can do. Let's see what kind of issues we can pop up. Let's see what we can try to do. You know, it's 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 something that's cool out there that we should all be trying to look at as an industry, as people, as just creative in nature. This is something that's good for us in the long term, helping us develop. Um, all right, so I'm checking out Ian World. See if it, I haven't really checked the news today. See if anything big or crazy happened. I've been pretty good. Uh, some uh, that's from last week. Yeah, there's not been a lot, a lot of major things. I mean, origin. Those are people who did very well at Origins. Um, our buddy uh, Brian, who runs uh, Dragon Slayer right here in Davie, Florida, uh, he I know was at Origins at, at the award show, and apparently it was very, very good. People were very happy with the show. 
Um, I think that's good. I think anytime a show does well, that's a good thing. I, once again, I wish shows were closer to me to for me to go to shows, but I mean, I you know, it's 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 like anything else in my life. Got to work around my family, so that's that is what it is. So, you know, I, I I'm I'm glad people are going to more shows. I'm glad they're doing more family fun things at shows too. So I think it's just 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 do more good shows. I mean, it's always freaked me out a little bit that. For comics, there are always, like, tons of shows for comic books. There's, you know, show week, show week, show week, show week. And, um... Uh, I gotta check us who this link is. Um, but for... I, I guess for... Uh, you know, RPGs is not the same. I get it, it's not the same. But, you know, there's so... It just seems that there's so many comic book shows. There's a comic book show this weekend, um, down here, that I'm probably gonna be going to at least Friday, maybe Saturday, but probably just Friday. I'm just... You know, just go see what's going on, see who's there, and but at the same time, it's like you know, going to these shows take time and money. Um, I know uh, who else? Uh, who went to SoonerCon that I'm thinking? Of? I can't think of the person. Uh, Josh, uh, Joshua Blackman, I think it was Joshua Blackman. Was it Joshua Blackman? Is it SoonerCon? I believe it was. Uh, I'll have to check this out. It's so weird. I'm looking at myself, talking to myself in a little delay. It's very weird. Is it Josh? Josh? Who went to SoonerCon? I cannot remember. Someone was talking about SoonerCon, how good it was. Jacob, yes, Jacob Blackman. Thank you. Jacob Blackman went um, and said he didn't make, you know, he didn't break even on this table, but he had a good time meeting with people. And I think those are important factors. I mean, you may not you may not win every time. God knows you may not win every time you go to these shows. Thank you, Jacob Blackman. See, I knew it was Jacob Blackman. It's just, you know... It's just part of the. It's part of the business. It's part of the development and getting ideas together, and uh, you know, so it's it's. I just want us as a group to advance even further. Um, you know, anybody who knows me. I mean, I'm just looking at my floor right now. There's, there's books sprawled everywhere. It's just so ridiculous. I mean, you know, you know, I've got, you know. On my notepad. Oh, this has got the secret stuff on here. I can't show you this stuff yet. That's really secret stuff. And, you know, Ink Magazine, Fortune, Fortune. I'm always reading business stuff because I think it's important to really get the business part of this stuff talked about. And I don't think we do enough of that. I think some people are doing it. I think some people are doing it as well as they can. I think certain uh, companies are out there, you know, pushing it in the right direction. But still... We still need to really advance this, you know. It's just, you know, I always go back to the same thing. People say there's no money in this industry, but I keep seeing people make more products in this industry. I think, I think that the the industry itself is changing. It's it's okay. Let's go back to the retail store argument, as always. You know, are retail stores helping sell third-party small guys' products? Yes or no? At this point, I don't know. I think some are. I think there are some independent stores that do very well that specialize in doing independent stuff and want to do that. There's some stores that will never ever look at a third-party thing for anything until it becomes popular. And then when it becomes popular, they'll complain they can't get enough of it in there. It's 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 the ultimate catch-22. Um, you add that on top of that. You know, if you do a Kickstarter, stores don't want to support you. It's like, oh, you know, i got to wait a year until the product comes in. And uh, and there's all these kinds of issues. Jeez, I really hate to do this every five seconds. And there's, and there's all these kinds of issues that go on top of that. It's just like, uh, you know, it, it becomes a big mess of how can we make this all work together that we all can do better, team up for stuff, and do, you know, more stuff. I remember... Back when um, 3.0 and 3.5 were going on, I remember when Green Ronin and Paradigm Concepts time, uh, teamed up to do their Interlock series. And it was, I would say that was a smart, smart idea. You know, there's two companies. I mean, yeah, Green Ronin was probably the bigger of the two, of course. But, you know, Paradigm Concepts had a lot of fans in their um, Living Arcanus game. So it's like, you know, two reasonably sized, reasonably sized companies are out there trying to find really good products, really good stuff where they could team up. And they did these books. And you don't really see that now in Pathfinder, which I was like, I'm always kind of like, why is there more team-ups? I mean, even when I tried to do Crisis, I'm not going to lie. Crisis was a tough, tough, tough situation. You know, 
I thought I could get more people involved in it. I thought more people would be more interested, even on the publishing side. And it, and it was very difficult. You know, some people were like, ah, I don't know. And it was like, okay, whatever. I'm, you know, I'm trying. I'm trying stuff. I'm trying stuff. It's just, you know, it, it, you know, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. Um. <laughs> See, it's funny when you have conversations coming in while you're doing these videos and you're trying to watch all this stuff at the same time. It's very complex, but it's very cool. So, uh, I, I, you know, okay, well, that's interesting. Um, I think you have a great idea about getting kids involved. Yeah, I think kids definitely need to get involved. That that suffers the same problem with comic books, too. If you don't get children reading the books now, you're never going to have them later. So, you know, this is real simple math. I think you got to find a way to do a box set or some kind of box set-ish thing in a digital format that costs, you know, dirt cheap, that people can pick up and start playing. Um, you know, I always wish that Pathfinder had done the basic level book or box set as a thing even cheaper than, and opened it for third party, because I think we could have supported it in a lot of different ways and helped them. We need a coalition, just some amazing people. Yeah, you know, I don't even think, I don't think you need even a coalition. I think, I think you just need people to say, you know what, I'm going to do some cool stuff. I, you know, well, ending. okay. Uh, all right. The media groups that exist, let's just call it like it is. Those guys are only interested in big big number sales, and we're not that. We're small guys. We're small, small numbers. You know, if we, if like, let's be honest. If we if we sell 5,000 copies, that's huge. That's If we sell 1,000, that's probably more in line to what you expect we're going to sell. 1,000 is not an unrealistic number to sell in the retail stores. And if you think about it, you got a book. Uh, who has a book out there? I know. All right. Uh, uh, Deep Magic. Deep Magic, I believe, was seventy-five bucks. Actually, I could look that up. Deep Magic from Cobalt um, Cobalt Press, I believe, was Magic. Oh, Kickstarter. I believe it was seventy-five dollars. I'm just gonna check right here in the Kickstarter. Let's see how much they raised, and let's talk about some fun stuff here. Okay, they raised one hundred twenty-six thousand dollars. And roughly it's about two thousand backers, so that's sixty bucks. About sixty bucks per if you if you want to do the average, just in your head. You know, so I'm going real quick. That book is a thick book, and that book actually cost a fair amount. I bought it at the PDF level, of course. I got to support a friend. Plus, it's, you know, twenty bucks. It wasn't a big deal. It was a PDF, exactly what I wanted. I'm very happy. <laughs> so there, it was, it was a good investment for me. The you know, since so the print one it says thirty five bucks, but I believe that might have been an old one, but. You know, it it was what the cost was. So, you know, that book is a is a big book. You sell a thousand copies of that. You know, at fifty at fifty bucks, you cut it half for them, so you make twenty five thousand dollars. To print that book, maybe it was uh, I don't know. I, you know, I I don't know how many I don't know how many they they made, but you know, okay, they probably made. Let's look at the print side. Uh, print, print, print. So let's figure a few, 65, 12, 12, 12, 60. So let's say, let's say, let's say the print, okay, 80 bucks. So 200 there. So let's say on the, on the big end, let's say that half of those, half of this is printed. So we're figuring like a thousand got printed there. They probably made another thousand to sell in stores. 2,000 books, $10,000 in printing, five dollars a book. Five dollars a book. Yeah, well, five dollars a book, 10,000. You know, this thing probably was a good seller in stores. You know, a lot of people bought it who missed the Kickstarter. But it is cool color and it looked nice. It was hardcover, Cobalt Press, Pathfinder had everything you wanted to make it successful, and you know that was a good deal. But once again, you know, stores bought from them because Wolfgang Bauer's name was on it, was attached to it, people knew. Uh, yes, thank you, thank you. So I'm just trying to think about: is there ways for us as uh, the guys doing this kind of work, putting these products out. How do we step? How do we? Step, how do we step further? How do we move from just being thought up as the secondary tier? Oh, it's not that important. It's you know, it's uh, it's you know. How do we move from that to? Oh yes, third party products always quality. Been very very impressed. And there are some guys doing great stuff. And the and this goes back to the same argument again. The professionalism. You've got guys who work for Paizo who do stuff, then do third party, then people the people complain. Oh. Wow, Keith uh, was kind of telling me it's eighty-five bucks. That's what they sold for on Amazon, but apparently they guess they're sold out. 
Oh, 85 bucks for Deep Magic. That's pretty good price. I didn't know it was that expensive, but... Uh, so it's, it's just... It's just amazing to me. Like I said, it's just an amazing industry. Why why we haven't made these changes? Why are we still kind of stuck in the same way we are? Why haven't we changed up our mindset and our business model to, to take ourselves in a different direction? You know, there, there has to be a different future for us. It, what we're doing, I don't think it's going to be sustainable forever. Even with, you know, PDFs and stuff like that, I think... The more digital, there's going to be more apps. There's going to be more ebooks, that kind of stuff. But I think we're great at doing intellectual property development and artwork. And I think we should be able to go to, you know, especially in this day and age, go to a small production company. I mean, even you know, there's tons of guys doing YouTube shows. Why can't they do a, a, a YouTube show about you know anybody's campaign world or a comic book about that or a web comic or you know something like that? Any kind of that kind of next step that seems to be logical. That would be smart. You know, we have fans. If you have fans and you have people w- watching it, there might be more fans if you move to another level. But I said, these are the same things I've read about before. This goes back to the same old thing with me doing the whole, <laughs> you know, how are we going to get people playing a living campaign when we can't even get engineers that call us back to do this kind of stuff. So I, I wouldn't call this a rant video, but it's definitely, you know, thinking outside the box, thinking long term thinking about how we can change the future in a good way. Uh, jeez. <sighs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, here's a little piece of information I just found out that's kind of interesting. Uh, John, uh, was, uh, John was nice enough to put on. They're, they're doing a, um, which I think was a great idea, a galactic map for with three-party realms on it. Which I think is a good idea. I've said that even when we did Crisis, I wanted to do something like that. And, you know, you know, it's like, yep. I, and I, you know, I, I agreed to this. Basically, it's the exact same thing I want to do. We should have an atlas where it's a big star map. And you say, well, this is where New Exodus is. And this is where this world is. And this is where this world is. And this is where this world is. And you basically set it up like that. And you point out the world. And you make it. And there's that connection. So people can say, oh, this world's here. And this world's here. It's all, you know. So that solidifies us as third party guys playing in the same universe. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, I I thought this was a good idea. It was just getting, it was like just rounding everybody together. It's kind of like rounding cats. It's a very difficult thing to do, but. You know. Okay, I guess that's in the, that's enough. It's been thirty minutes. Um, we've talked about this. It's just you know getting this idea out there and getting people involved. That's that's a tough part. Um, yeah, Alan, thank you for liking the idea. Um, so this is the first night show. This is a little longer than I planned to be. You know, it's a lot longer by yourself and you're not walking around. Um, what I'd like to do uh, is find a way to. You know, as, as even though I use Facebook Live for this, I would like to find a way to do this maybe through YouTube or something. I'm still not sure exactly what I want to use, but we can definitely do interviews. I mean, a lot of people really liked the thing we did with Sean K. Reynolds. Uh, Sean's a good guy. I think he's a good interviewer. I think, you know, getting more people to do that kind of stuff is, is good long term. So maybe we can start doing that. Maybe some suggestions, some people you want to see me talk to. Um, you know, there are people I think would be just good to interview and just cool stuff to, you know, talk about. So if you like that, uh, do me a favor, since this is also going to be on YouTube, you can go below the video on our YouTube. It lists all of our links, anything we might talked about. We link back to that so you can get this information. Um, and that if you're here on Facebook, check out our YouTube page. Oh, yes, if you're watching here, subscribe to on our YouTube. Because basically, we're trying to get the numbers as high as we can so we can actually get to that point where we can start doing much bigger things and getting more people involved. You know, I thank everybody for coming by and looking. Just take a second, push subscribe on our YouTube. It doesn't cost you anything. It's free. I mean, you're going to watch it live or you can watch it there. It's just readily available for you either way. All right. I got to finish up some more stuff and then probably talk to some people and then go to bed because I'm tired already. But I'm hoping to have a lovely five-day weekend. So it's going to be a good weekend for me and I'll be enjoying myself. All right. As always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, Come back tomorrow. Who knows what we'll be talking about? Something crazy might happen over the night. We might have some cool stuff to talk about. As always, thanks for your support, and I'll talk to you all later.